Welcome to the Kingdom Hearts 2 Randomizer Casino. Do you need to scratch that Gamba itch, but regular randomizer just isn't cutting it anymore and you don't want to lose your real money? Then try your luck at these. We have four games, Bingo, Insane Blackjack, Icy Slots, and Data Roulette. I'm also somewhat of a degenerate myself, so let's see how I do at these games. I'd rather we just skip the formalities. Alright, first we're doing bingo. You already know what bingus is, we play this all the time on my stream, and even if you've never seen it, it's pretty self-explanatory. Get five in a row, column, or diagonal. My board was pretty easy. We got a magnet in Halloween Town shotgun, beat Bailey in Hollow Bastion 1, did the magic puzzle in Agrabah 2, and defeated the experiment. If you're wondering what this symbol means, it basically means find enough forms to reach that max level. So if it was max 5, you'd need 3 forms, ours is max 6, so we need 4 forms. We were able to find forms in STT, on level 31, in Space Paranoids, and we went all over the universe collecting 4 pages to get final form from Pooh in Spooky Cave. Thanks a lot, pal. I just love that every time I want something from you, it's always in the cave or on Starry Hill. So no, I'm not eating the pot. I'm gonna leave you in there to think about what you've done. Well anyway, we got a bingo, yay! On to the next game. This is Insane Blackjack. Basically, all the important checks have a value attached to them via the generator, and the goal is to get our points to equal 21. If we go over, we lose, and have to start over with a new seed. It's called Insane Blackjack because the seed is set to Insane Difficulty, which makes important checks more likely to appear later in the seed. Alright, pro strat for this. Look at what STT has and compute the points you'd need to get 21. STT, while not a fan favorite in Rando, is pretty easy to get through with nothing, considering it's the first world in the vanilla game. So we get all the points there and go looking for whatever's left. In our first seed, there's a 15 in STT, meaning we'd need to get 6 more points to get 21. We find Valor in Pride Land, so that's worth 5 points, and we get a report in Agra Bro, so now we have 6. We're good to go, let's complete STT and get our win. Uh, okay, we're fighting Axel 2 with 12 points left in the world. Surely we're getting all the checks before Data Roxas, right? Okay, okay, limit form, 7 points left. Once more and second chance are worth 7 points. We know once more is in Halloween Town, but if we're really lucky, second chance will be right here. Oh my peepo. So Data Roxas has 4 points worth of stuff. How about we finish the shotgun first before we make any drastic decisions here? Shoot. Alright, attempt number two. You know, this time I figured the STT thing was really cheesing it, even though we didn't win. So let's turn it off and see what happens. But new pro strat. Look at what DC and the world that never was has and compute the points you need to get 21. DC and the world that never was are harder, yes, but if you find a way to complete them, you pretty much win. This time Pradlands has a bit more to offer us, and we have 9 points on the board when we leave. We get 2 reports while shotgunning to get 2 more points to put us at 11. Halloween Town gives us another report and Jack Sparrow's weapon, so we're at 15 now, and we just need 6 points. I fish around a little more in each world before going back to Twilight Town, where our last attempt made us bust. We get 2 reports, which is a good sign we're slowly making our way up. We're at 17, and... <laughs> Why do people damn it? Okay, attempt number three. I realize what a dumbie I am and check Pooh's house immediately because you never know, it could have something good. And would you look at that, he has final form. Looks like he learned his lesson. I realize I should also check Atlantica's tutorial since it's free and in the randomizer it's even more free because there's an option to let you skip the tutorial. Ariel has nothing in this seed, but that's fine. Learning from the last two seeds, I go to Twilight Town first to potentially get some high value checks before our points get too high. After we reach the top of Yensit's tower, we have 10 points. If we can get all the checks in the world that never was which total to 11, we can get 21. So I beat Roxas with a good old fashioned quick run, but Zigbar proves to be a bit too much with my tools. Which is fine, we can continue the shotgun and maybe get lucky and find a finishing plus or get 21 with the checks in the shotgun. 
We find a couple more items to put us at 19. At this point, if we can find two reports or a magic spell, we win. I try my luck in the rest of the shotguns and even push to the barrel fight in PR. Then once again realizing what a dumby I am, I go to Pridelands since I never did the shotgun for it. We know from the hint that there's a proof here, but we don't want it cause that's too many points and it'll put us over. After Living Bones, we start making our way to Simba and... We've done it! It was that easy. Rando 101, do your shotguns. Okay, next is IC slots. IC stands for important check. Using this lovely slot machine that I built with my own two hands, we're gonna play slots until we win. Whatever symbol we win with is the category of items we have to collect. So if we win with the report symbol, we have to collect all 13 reports. If we win with the summon symbol, we have to collect all four summons. If we win with the magic symbol, we have to collect all 18 magic, and so on. All right, let's see how lucky I am. <laughs> Oh! 24 spins, huh? I probably shouldn't play slots in real life anytime soon. So we won with forms, meaning we need to collect all 5 drive forms. Looking at the tracker, we can see Valor on levels, Wisdom in OC, Limit in Beast Castle, Master in 100 Acre, and Final in Twilight Town. And no, I'm not counting forcing Final as obtaining it. I have to go get the actual check. Limit's really easy to get, it ends up being in the shotgun of BC. We also find a page in there, so we can go further in 100 Acre to get Master Form. I only end up needing 3 pages to get it. Looks like Pooh really did learn his lesson. Final is also really easy to get, since I find it in the woods in TT. This seed's probably gonna be pretty easy, right? <laughs> Wrong. I go all the way to Hydra with no luck in finding Wisdom Form, which means I have to go through Agrabah to get Orin's weapon, which will unlock OC2. But before doing so, I try to level up in Space Paranoids, 1 to get stats, and 2 to try to get Valor Form. Valor ends up only being on level 14, and I try to level up more, but things turn deadly. So I leave and decide this will be enough. Twin Lords ends up having Orin's weapon, so we just need Wisdom Form now from somewhere in OC. I beat OC's second visit and end up not finding it, which means Wisdom is on Zexion or on one of the cups. I try my luck with AS Zexion first. I'm really hoping it's here since he's not too difficult. The data version and the cups are gonna be a pain in the peepo. Son of a peepo, man. Oh wait, we got it. Okay. <laughs> okay, maybe my luck isn't as bad as I thought it was. Let's go to the last game. The last game is Data Roulette. In these settings you start out with two proofs, and all you need to do is find the last one. However, the proof is on one of the Data Org bosses, so you're guaranteed to fight one of them. But, to make things even spicier, the Datas also give the hints. Meaning you have no hints for any items until you beat a Data. When you beat one, they'll reveal all of the important checks in one of the worlds. So basically, pick a Data and try your luck. Take a guess on how many Datas I had to beat to win. My first target is Marluxia, since I feel pretty comfortable fighting him. Throughout the fight, I'm basically using Duck Flare into Final Form Fire. These fights are going to take some time since our stats are below the damage floor for all the datas, which is around 60 or so. Also, my Final Form is only level 4 and we have one fire. But regardless, this fight isn't very hard and after we beat him, he reveals Halloween Town, confirming no proof there. He also confirms there's no proof on himself either, so we move on to the next data. I decide to go for Alexeus next, since he's another fight I feel comfortable with. I start out with Duck Flare, reflect his rocks, then Duck Flare again, and reflect again. We get him to DM phase, where I continue to bring his health down by reflecting more rocks. Then I summon Stitch real quick to bring Donald back from the dead, and finish him with Duck Flare. He reveals Pride Lands, confirming that there's no proof, and we find that Lexeus himself also doesn't have a proof. Next I go for Axel, a really easy data fight if you know how to loop him. I do a pretty simple loop where I do a full ground combo with explosion, then thunder him to knock him into the air. This makes him go into the firewall, and I can use the reaction command to stun him momentarily, and do a ground combo into thunder again, and repeat this until his health is low. Then at the end of the fight, we need to do the full reaction command to clear the fire floor, and now we can kill him. Just never mind the fact that I almost died here. 
Unfortunately for us, he reveals Disney Castle, which is a world we already cleared, and he doesn't have the proof. Next I decide to go fight Data Xemnas. I really wanted to find Limit Form and Trinity for this, but I don't feel like fighting my other options. I end up dying to Data Xemnas 1 a few times because I was hangry and getting impatient after spending 5 hours at this casino, but we beat him with Reflect and we use once more to survive his breakdance. For the Zebra Man, we dodge his orbs and reflect them at him until he tosses us into the air. Then he starts messing around and wasting my time, so I use Session to push him to laser phase. We have plenty of items, so I wait until he and his clones start shooting together like an American family on a Saturday, and I take this opportunity to reflect into Session. Eventually he throws some orbs again, I dodge them and get his health down, he attempts to throw me again but this time I read him like a pro gamer and reflect it. Then in his throw move, I reflect in Session again to get a pretty nice dome skip. Oh my god! And what do you know, he has the proof of non-existence. Pretty fitting. Alright, by now we've spent almost 6 hours in this casino and I'm starving, both physically and financially. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next run.